Hi, I'm Iona, Assistant Director at the Marble Falls Public Library, and you're listening to Book, Line, and Sinker, a podcast from the staff here at the Marble Falls Public Library. This podcast is all about reading, books, movies, and other topics related to the public library. We're really excited to share our thoughts with you, and we hope you enjoy the show. So welcome back, listeners. Bookline and Sinker is back after a two-week break, and we are excited to talk about audiobooks. I have Amanda back with me today. Hi. And we want to share our love of audiobooks with our listeners, and especially since audiobooks are kind of the most popular format in the summer and they're the fastest growing format of books right now and so we're just going to start off talking about what we're listening to. So I just actually finished a book called Jumped. I found it on RB Digital and I love it because it's in three voices. It's um, the setting is urban high school and you because of the narrators you just fall in love with the characters and they make you laugh out loud. So, jumped. Is that a like an it's adult a young, book? Or a... No, it's young adult. Oh. Um, it's a National Book Award finalist oh, okay. by Rita Williams Garcia. Oh, awesome. Uh, so, I'm going through the Anne of Green Gable series oh, right now. Favorites. <laughs> and I'm on Anne of Avonlea. Um, it's narrated by Barbara Caruso. I don't know if that's how you pronounce her name, but she's narrated like Tuck Everlasting Little Women, um, and it's absolutely amazing. It brings the story, like, it just changes the way it, in my head, because I've always just read Mm -hmm. Anne of Green Gables, so now I'm on Anne of Avonlea, and I'm really enjoying it. That's funny, because Barbara Caruso, that is how you say her name, is on my list of favorite narrators, (laughs) and, um... Actually, I didn't read Anne of Green Gables growing up. I just, I missed out on it. I had some friends that read it, and I didn't know what it was all about. And I listened to it for the first time instead of reading it. And I, as soon as I finished Anne of Green Gables, I had to go through the whole list and listen to them all. So I would say, yeah, my grandma, that was like one book I remember her telling me, like, I had to read so then we could watch the movies together. And I always, I love it. Anne is, like, one of my favorite characters <laughs> ever. <laughs> and I really love it as she gets older. I'm so glad that the series, like, continues. And I'm not a huge fan of series, but it, it was nice to, it's nice to see just how she grows up. So, favorite narrators. Um, I'm going to start off with saying probably most people's favorite narr- narrators is Jim Dale from the Harry Potter. Jim Dale. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't know he does 134 different voices for That's Harry ridiculous. Potter. That's <laughs> ridiculous. I don't know how he does it, but it's like a movie in, the, in your head. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know how he keeps it all straight. Um, another guy who's good at that is um, Ra- uh, Rob Ingalls, or Inglis, it might be. But he narrated um, the, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Oh. Did you try that on No, him? I haven't listen to that one. Another, another great one in The Hobbit. Um, I would recommend The Hobbit for family road trips. That seems like it would be more fun to listen to mm-hmm. than read, so I might try that out. Another one of my favorite narrators is also an author, um, Neil Gaiman. I would always start with the Graveyard book and then uh, work through his other novels because I feel like that one's the most... Uh, Family friendly. So he narrated that. Mm-hmm. Okay, I listened to that, but I didn't put that together. Yeah, he he doesn't narrate uh, all his books, but he narrates Coraline, the Graveyard Book, uh, Norse mythology. I think he narrates um, Nevermore. The one he doesn't is American Gods, um, but I think that he got a great narrator for that. American Gods was probably my favorite book of his, but. Have you read it and listened to it? I've only listened to part of it to see who like what it's who the narrator was, um, but I've only, mostly just read it. And that so he writes a, adult and children's. Children's. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've only I've only read his children's books. Yeah, he uh, American Gods is great. It's also a TV show on Stars. 
I think, mm-hmm. and that's kind of what ma- I, they republished it and changed the cover recently, and it was because of the TV show. I think some of my favorite narrators are authors. When an author reads their book, it's it's magical. It is. They, <laughs> it just makes it so personal. Um, top on my list has to be Charlotte's Web. Oh. It just makes me happy. E.B. White does an amazing job reading that. Then there's people who read their biographies or memoirs. That's nice. Um, Angela's Ashes, read by Frank McCourt. I mean, who else mm. could read that? Yeah. So, or narrate it. Yeah, I'm really a fan of biographies being read by their authors. Mm-hmm. I say I love Toni Morrison when she reads her own books. Mm. Her voice, it like... It's almost like meditating. She's so soothing and it makes the, her, she has difficult topics in her books, but it just like mellows me out <laughs> to hear her. Did she narrate Beloved? Mm-hmm. Okay, because I think that's the only one I've listened to. Yeah, uh, we have Beloved and The Bluest Eye. Um, my favorite one that she narrated was Song of Solomon though. She just does a phenomenal job with that book. When did you start listening to audiobooks? I started thinking about that, and it has to be at least in middle school. Oh, wow. Yeah. How about you? I say I had teachers that introduced them to the classes. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't really remember it, though. I think I actually started listening to them on my own probably after college. I think the introduction of Audible and like digital audiobooks is what got me to listen because the car I had never had CD players. I don't remember. I had boom boxes growing up, but I quickly got rid of those. And so I, I was introduced to the iPod pretty early. So it wasn't until they, I could get them on my iPod. (laughs) I was using libraries when I was in public libraries, when I was in college and traveling a lot Mm -hmm. and just for the audiobooks. Oh yeah. And they had them on every format I mean CDs or tapes and of course it you know sometimes they would be scratched or something but you would just listen to them and <laughs> because you love the story so much it, it's it's perfect for travel I so, see yeah I remember when mp3s were new um, for audiobooks and I would get those and then put them on my computer mm-hmm. and then I could put them on anything I wanted I don't know if that was legal. I'm not going <laughs> to encourage people to do that, but I remember too. <laughs> in college, which kind of segues into kind of the benefits of audiobooks. Thinking about Toni Morrison, I learned that you can actually listen to a book that's above your reading level than actually reading it. Mm-hmm. So if you find a book that's difficult to read, if you listen to it, it's supposed to be easier Um, to understand and I guess that's why teachers try to introduce them. I think that's an excellent point. I've tried to go through some of the classics that I didn't read in school, maybe some of the difficult ones, and just listen to them to help me accomplish reading that and it really translates it. I like it. Yeah, that's why I think The Hobbit would be great to read because I remember that being kind of boring. To try the to get Hobbit, through. it's an adventure. I, are you kidding? I love that book. I the uh, one, it's so big, though. And I read it when I was really young. It's not big. Well, you look at it. Yeah, I was going to say, I have to revisit it because I remember reading it like when I was really young. Okay. Um, and trying to get through it. Um, I always preferred Harry Potter than over Lord of the Rings, but mm-hmm. I'm not going to let my mom hear me <laughs> say that because she'd well, be very see, upset. Well, the Lord of the Rings can... Um, be a little challenging to get through, but The Hobbit is a different story. I want to listen to that one. It's worth it. And so listening is, it really helps improve comprehension, your reading skills, Um, but one reason I think they've become so popular um, is they help us reclaim our time. We spend so much time now commuting, uh, doing things that at, whether it's at work or home, like chores and stuff, where we're not maximizing our time. And I think audiobooks allow more people to read because you can listen to them while you're doing something else. And my generation especially <laughs> likes multitasking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're all ADD in my mind. So 
I want to give our listeners some audiobook recommendations. What are some books you would recommend? Um, I have people ask me a lot, um, what would you recommend? My husband and I are going on a trip, and so we've got to um, find something that they both can agree on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> John Grisham is a go-to for a lot of couples, but what I like to recommend is maybe something they neither one of them has read before, and so I steer them to... Um, something like James Harriet's uh, All Creatures Great and Small series. Um, it's narrated by uh, Christopher Timothy, which is brilliant because that's the guy who plays um, plays him in the BBC series. Oh, and so, okay. <laughs> uh, but that usually, you know, animal stories make all people happy. Even the kids can listen to it. Plus, yeah. it's, it's mm -hmm. funny, so... Um, I highly recommend that series. I would say, yeah, ha agreeing on an audiobook is probably <laughs> um, one of the most difficult things me and Clay have because he wants to listen to like nonfiction, and I like on a road trip I want to listen to fiction. Mm -hmm. So we can usually compromise like a good mystery. I've started yeah. to get him hooked on something that we can discuss um, while we're driving. But a book that I would recommend to anyone. Um, I think everyone would lo love it. It's called Lincoln and the Bardo by George Saunders. It recently won the Audi Awards, which is why um, it's kind of gaining in popularity again. It was actually published last year, um, but there are 166 different narrators, and it's about eight, like it's a historical um, fiction with ghosts, and it's about Abraham Lincoln and his son, and it's very, uh, very entertaining for the road. Mm -hmm. For anybody? I I don't know if I would recommend, like, families with young children, but if just, like, huh. a couple people, I think anyone would like it. I read the description on the book, and I was like, eh, I'm probably not going to read this. And then I listened to the audio, and I was like, this is absolutely Crazy. amazing. I've gotten a lot of people to listen to it. <laughs> Do we have it on RB Digital? Yes, it's okay. on RB Digital. Um, there is a whole list, but it's um, it's worth the wait. Yeah, I'm going to give that one a try. Um, one of my favorite audiobooks is uh, The Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck. The main character is um, a man but it's read by a woman, and she does a phenomenal <laughs> job. Her name is Kate uh, Redding, and it's it's my favorite um, audiobook, or one of my favorite audiobooks, I would have to say. But then The Good Earth is part of a trilogy, so Sons is the is the sequel. So I thought, oh, I was excited about that because I'd never read that one. And I thought, well, I'll just listen to it. So it's read by a different narrator. I couldn't do it. Oh. <laughs> so it, that just, um, the thing I, I've noticed about audiobooks is the narrator can make or break it. Some books, like some of my favorite books that I've read, if the narrator's not right, I can't listen to it. I just have to return to yeah. the library. <laughs> I've really started sampling um, narrators before I check out or purchase an audiobook mm -hmm. because there are these books that people think they want on audio because they're popular, and I'm like, no. You don't want that on audio because it's not good. <laughs> it's true. Uh, that's one of the features I like about RB Digital is you can, even before you check it out, is you can just preview mm -hmm. um, the narrator. I definitely do that before I purchase. And um, I could say it goes the other way, though. I've noticed that there are some books that I definitely wouldn't read, um, have, don't have much of an interest, but say, let's say one of my favorite narrators um, reads it like Barbara Caruso, I might give it a try. And then it just changes my opinion of the book. Get, I can give more books a try that way. Yeah, I actually want to listen to Tuck Everlasting now that I know Barbara Caruso. Mm -hmm. Because I just love her voice. And I really love um, British narrators. There's a book called You, Me, Everything. It's new, and I wasn't really going to read it, and I sampled the narrator, and she just has this, like, beautiful British accent mm -hmm. and reads um, about France and the countryside. It was uh, it was fun. It was very soothing. 
and a book that I probably would not have read, but I listened to because the narrator uh, was Outlander. Oh, that narrator. She's amazing. She is. I think she's maybe Scottish. I think so, because that's where it's kind of okay. based. Um, her name's Davina Porter. I <sighs> wanted to see if she d- does anything else, because I absolutely she, loved her voice. She does, because... Um, I wasn't going to read that, but I started listening to it, and I loved the narration, so I searched by her name. She's She's got other things. The, oh, that's another thing I wanted to mention to our uh, listeners out there, is that you can find a narrator that you like and search in our catalog by narrator, and that will lead you to uh, CDs and RB Digital um, titles. That's super helpful. I was like, and I think uh, what I kind of wanted to end with was talking about RB Digitals for our listeners, um, because when you open up the application and you're in the audiobooks, the ones on the homepage, I mean, a lot of them are on hold, and you scroll through, and it's kind of a bummer because you want to <laughs> be able to check something out then and there, but we have so many titles that are available and ready to be checked out. So when you go to the top left-hand corner and just view all of the audiobooks. Organize it by the date added so that you can scroll from newest to oldest. Mm-hmm. And once you get to the second, third page, every there'll be so many books available for checkout that um, weren't that you missed scrolling on the home screen. We just have a lot available. There's a lot to discover. That's how I discovered this um, one called Jumped that we talked about at the beginning. Is just um, I just searched by subject something Mm -hmm. that I kind of was in the mood for and uh, previewed it and gave it a try so yeah if you take the time to really just search through what we have um, there's a lot available a lot of good stuff that's kind of actually how I discovered Anne of at like Anne of Green Gables not I'd read it before but I was like oh I didn't know there was an audio book for this and then I started listening and I'm on the second one now. <laughs> it'll change your world and it'll help your um, reading list. You know, I like to write what I've write down what I've uh, read. Mm-hmm. Keep, keep a running list, and so when you start, when you combine that with listening, your list gets long, and you accomplish a lot. It does between reading um, print and listening to audiobooks. I probably can get through three books a week. Mm-hmm. Just by listening mostly and then reading in my downtime at in the evening it's better than tv it is (laughs) i agree and i actually like it better than movies um but that's just me all right well thank y'all for tuning in next week we're going to be talking about memoirs and focusing on ones by comedians because a lot of us like to read those and they're really funny so join us next week 